Hi, welcome back to Just As Seasoning. Today we're looking at the Jordan MA2 Future Beginnings. Um, this colorway is the first Jordan MA2 that I've made. So it'll be quite interesting to look at that, see if there's any resale on it, uh, see what it looks like on foot. And yeah, have a quick look at the details of the shoe. So, to be honest, I think Nike will be kind of surprised at why the MA2s didn't instantly sell out and why their lifestyle Jordans never instantly sell out. This is almost sold out now, apart from a couple of sizes from like a UK 11 upwards. Pairs of these have also started appearing on StockX as well. So it shows there is some demand there at least for a lifestyle Jordan. I think the only way these will ever make serious money on StockX is if they become a really, really popular silhouette and people go back and want the OG, the first ever MA2. At that point, sure, they might make a bit on StockX. Apart from that, at the moment, I think the most you'll make is in the tens of pounds. It's definitely not in the hundreds. So it'd be quite a long shot to hold on to these dead stock just on the off chance that they might become a super popular silhouette for that reason. So your options, if you have got a pair of these, is you can sell them straight up and see if you can make a little bit of profit on them. Um, or you can just use them, which is what I think I'm going to do with them. I'd say the reason that this silhouette didn't sell out instantly on sneakers, like a lot of classic Jordan silhouettes do, is because of legacy mainly. If you look at the Air Jordan 1s, they always sell out without a doubt, and that's because that was Michael Jordan's first Jordan. And it's the same for, you know, the Jordan 3s and 4s as well, because they were very early in his career. And they're all fantastic looking silhouettes apart from anything else. So let's have a look at the box, let's have a look at the sneakers, um, and then I'll show you some on-foot shots as well. The box, this is the box, it's a really sort of plain Jumpman box, embossed in the lid you've got triple zero and a 23. So inside, we've got Jumpman triple zero 23 again, inspired by greatness, designed for flight. At the end of the day, this isn't the most special box in the world, but I think it plays to the Jordan branding very well because that's, in my opinion, the best way Nike are going to sell lifestyle sneakers for more than £100. Wow. So embossed into the paper, you've got like lines, basically, sort of squares. Um, and then more triple zero, 23s. There's also some coordinates in there embossed into the paper. But this is what we're looking at. So that's one. That's the other. So the main materials on the upper of these is suede on the sides, a little bit around the toe cap. Around the back, you got like some, I don't know if that's like a, I don't think it's leather. If, if it's leather, it's a synthetic leather. If not, it's a sort of rubbery sort of pattern. You then, alongside all of the suede, you've got this sort of synthetic, tightly woven mesh material that covers the foam. But then poking out, you can also see bits of the foam around the suede. You can see bits of the foam poking out there. And on the tongue, you can see more foam. They're a real solid shoe. So you can see along the side here, parts of it have got double stitching. Parts of it along here have just got single stitching. But it's very well put together. The MA2s really play to this sort of deconstructed look that you can see on sneakers like Virgil Abloh's collaborations with Nike. The deconstructed look is sort of reinforced with these little stitches along here, which are like little circular stitches that make it almost look as if they're sort of tacking stitches just to hold it in place rather than properly stitched to keep it there permanently. The foam, obviously, we've mentioned adds to that deconstructed look, the fact that it's exposed just on the edges just like we saw with the 
Jordan 1 off whites that got exposed foam around all of the edge of the collar. But then on the description for these shoes, Nike even described all of the tags as deconstructed tongue tags. And I can kind of see what they're getting at there. There's off-centered pull tabs to pull them on and off your feet. Here, here, here. The tongue tag itself has got some of the writing on it that we saw on the inside the lid of the box. Jumpman, inspired by greatness, designed for flight. It's got number 23, Monka Jordan's number. I do like these pull tabs to be fair. On the side, pull tabs we've got 1979 to 2021. I think that what that stands for is 1979 being the first year that Nike actually put air into the soles of a shoe. And of course this is a Jordan with visible air. Um, and obviously 2021 is the point at which they first bought out the MA2s. Uh, they came out a couple of weeks ago. Looking at these we can see there's no significantly sized Jumpman logo really anywhere on the shoe. There's a tiny one here with the uh, tongue tag with the with the writing on it. There isn't one on the Nike Air tongue tag, the two tongue tags are different. There's a tiny little jump man just there on the top or the, the very edge of the uh, side tag and that's the same on the other shoe as well. Apart from that the only other visible jump man is on the base of the shoe, on the sole. And even that's like more of a medium sized jump man so it's not screaming the fact that they're Jordans. At the end of the day, these are lifestyle shoes. It's not something you could imagine Michael Jordan ever playing basketball in. So I think I think they've probably got it about right. Maybe a little bit more Jordan branding, make it a little bit larger, especially on that tongue tag, but they're still just a really, really beautiful shoe. The only other fabric that we've got on the shoe, apart from the suede and the, can you hear that, the tight mesh? is there's a little bit more mesh on the side here but that's like a loosely woven mesh and then around the collar there's a white fabric and that white fabric covers this collar which is super super padded i can imagine that'll be really comfortable to wear and you kind of expect that with these being lifestyle jordans rather than a plain shoe ironically one of my favorite parts of the sneaker is actually on the inside it just adds more to that deconstructed look it's not what you expect from the insole of of any Nike shoe really, usually you just expect the Nike logo or the Jumpman logo and that sort of it. But with these it's got that text, uh, it's got like little blue dots. They're like sunken into the insole that I guess are there for aeration to keep your feet breathing. What's also quite nice is just to have a J where you can squish the visible air windows. I think that's pretty cool. I can't wait to have them on my feet see what they feel like. So coming up we've got some b-roll of these sneakers on feet um, and then I'll come back to you and talk to you about how they feel, whether they're true to size and then wrap up the video. So we're back. These fit true to size, definitely. Um, these here are a size UK seven and a half, US eight and a half, EU forty two. Um, there's a little bit of space in the toe box, but I like a little bit of space, but not too much. So that is perfect for for me. Having a quick sort of walk around the house in these, it feels like you're walking on air. It really does. Like, excuse the pun, because obviously there physically is air in the sole, but these are some of the comfiest 
Jordans I've ever worn. The sole seems really, really bouncy in these compared to other uh, sneakers I've worn that have got air technology. I suppose that's supported by the fact that this is, you've obviously got the gum on the bottom with the rubber, um, you've got the air in the sole and then this is all foam here. So these are light as anything on your feet but also feel super solid and like I said, it feels like you're bouncing along when you're when you walking in these. What else can I mention about these? The only thing left to mention, I suppose, is they don't come with any spare laces. Uh, they just come with the one pair, which you, you kind of expect. But, I mean, when you're paying £125, these were, for the Jays, I kind of wanted an alternative colour. Maybe a sort of slate colour like this. But the laces would actually look quite good. These are flat laces. You don't get any puffy laces like you do on uh, Nike SBs or anything like that. But yeah, um, let me know if you either cop these or if you just decide to buy them on the resale. They're not going for too much over retail at the moment. In fact, some I've seen go for retail or even just a little bit less. So I definitely recommend them for a personal. They're a fantastic looking shoe. They feel amazing. There's no reason not to get them really if, you, if you're looking for a pair of personals. Um, that are also part of the Jordan brand and the, the start of a, a future beginning. Thanks very much for watching. See ya. Bye.